If you've been thinking about getting involved in Airbnb rentals in the city of Cleveland, folks, you're in the right place. If you want to do it on your own, that's cool. If you want to do it passively from everywhere in the world, that's what we help you do. We also like to give you tips and tricks so you can do it on your own. Today, we're going to be talking about a short-term rental downtown Cleveland for a client coming to us all the way from Florida. Let's get into it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today, I am working with my man, Jose. Jose, brother, what is up, right? You come to me. All the way from Florida, and we are here doing some Airbnb investing with you, brother. Uh, so where we are at, I did a couple videos for you. We ended up putting in a very strong offer on one property, uh, and then we were going to put in an offer on another property. And on that other property, you ended up getting outbid by another investor. You know, these are pretty hot properties. A lot of good stuff happening in the Cleveland market. You know, these properties make money. So if you're investing with me and people are buying the properties out from under you, so to speak, that should be a good sign, right? That shows that you and I are on to something, right? If ain't nobody else interested in the houses, that could be a problem, right? So we missed out on that one deal. The other deal, uh, we, you know, we sent the offer in. It was a pretty strong offer, but the sellers, uh, you know, they just shit the bed, essentially, right? They, just, they didn't give us a response. We gave them a deadline. We can't wait forever, man. We got to move on, right? So that's what you and I are doing, brother. We are moving on. And I got one right there downtown for you, brother. I think this one is going to be a solid deal. Uh, we're looking at a much lower price point, uh, decently lower uh, nightly rent than those other ones, but... It's solid, bro, and it might even uh, help you out because uh, that'll save some money for you up front, and then maybe we can get you a couple of these investments to start that portfolio. So without further ado, Jose, let's get into how the structure of the deal right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. Let's get into the meat, right? Airbnb investing, it's cool, it's great, but how do we make it all work, right? How do we get the thing moving? How do we put the pieces together, right? Of course, my team will handle everything for you guys. Everything. Property management, maintenance, insurance, tenant screening, tenant leasing, the whole shebang, right? Putting it on platforms, Airbnb, VRBO. Uh, there's platforms uh, that specifically target healthcare workers, right? Like we get a lot of people very interested uh, <clears throat> in, in short term rentals because we have so many like medical facilities downtown, right? We get a lot of like contracted nurses, right? You get the traveling nurses and stuff, right? So when you guys hear me talk about short term rentals, right, it doesn't always necessarily mean we're going to be running to people on vacation. That's not always the case. We might be doing like a three-week stay, a 45-day stay, a 60-day stay to like a traveling nurse, right? There's all types of things. And when you're right downtown like we are, all right, that's, that's, that is big, man. That's where they want to be, right? You got downtown Cleveland. You got Asia Town. We got all the stuff. And then right over here on this side, you got University Circle, Little Italy, right? So... This is like a very popping area right here. This is where stuff's happening. You get people that want to, you know, hit up all the, the cool nightlife bars, restaurants, right? University Circle, that's the big medical action, right? We're right over there. We're right next to everything. And, of course, you got more stuff, obviously, downtown Cleveland. You got everything, right? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the Q, the Brown Stadium, you name it, we got it. So if people are on vacation, this is where they're coming. Oops, I'm, tr I'm trying to get you guys a street view here. If they're on vacation, they want to be close to downtown. If they're working in the medical industry, that's where they want to be as well, right? So you see we got big old buildings, and then here is our building. This is pretty cool. 
This is a town home here. I'll just cruise you down the street a little bit more. You can see what's going on. You got some like big industrial thing here. And you just get some more skyscraper action over here because we are downtown, right? Now, this is cool. This is a town home, right? But what's nice about this is there's no HOA, right? We are on the corner unit, right? So we cut the grass, you know, us, Holton Wise, we'll cut the grass for you. You don't have an HOA to worry about, which is good. Because when I do short-term rental investments for you guys, I, I try to avoid properties with HOAs, right? Because that's another added layer of scrutiny. It's another uh, hand in the cookie jar. And sometimes they uh, place regulations on you being uh, unable to do short-term rentals. Sometimes there's even HOAs that don't let you do regular rentals, right? So when I do the short-term rental stuff, guys, I like to focus on properties properties that don't have HOAs, right? The city of Cleveland, they've already gone through, legislated all their Airbnb stuff. They are cool with Airbnb. Uh, we're not going to have any issues with them. Uh, the property, quite nice, man, right? It's pretty nice. Now, this is a 2000 build, 2005, okay? So it's 16 years old, right? So there's no tax abatement. Uh, just so you guys are aware, right? In the city of Cleveland, uh, they want to get new development in there, right? They want to get new development in, in targeted neighborhoods, right? So we're seeing a lot of, you know, newer development, right? So right now, today, if you want, you could buy a property in Cleveland that's a brand new build. You get a tax abatement, but you ain't going to get it for this price, right? You're going to have to pay uh, quite a hefty sum. Uh, but we do get lucky, and in the hotter neighborhoods, the more trendy neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods where the action is, sometimes we can pick up properties like this that are pretty damn close to new for a good price. Like this one, 2005, right? So the builder, when they bought it, you know, they took advantage of that tax credit, right? Because what we don't want to deal with when we're doing these short-term rentals is like 100-year-old properties, right? We want some newer construction, right? And that's exactly what we get here. Now, as you can see, it's pretty nice, but we should spruce it up a little bit, right? I'm just putting a budget on this, 15 Gs, right? 15 Gs to probably repaint, freshen it up, right? Like, I think it's about 15 years old, some of the carpet in here. So we want to spruce it up, but we don't really need to do much. Here's your parking uh, for your guests, right? All in all, very solid, just 15 Gs, and then we'll put in 25 Gs, right? $25,000 to furnish it, right? So as far as the price goes to buy it, they're asking 188 It was under contract. It fell out of contract. To my understanding, it, it seems like the buyer uh, didn't get their financing. So what I would like to do is we'll come in kind of aggressive, right? I'd like to try to pick it up at 160 Now, that's where we're going to start. Do I 100% think we're going to lock it down for 160 Not sure. But I think that's a relatively decent starting point. If the seller balks at that, uh, you know, it would make sense to go up another 10k or so, but I would like to start there because they just fell out of contract. They've been on the market for quite some time, so I'd really like to try to get aggressive, see if we can't get you the best deal. If we could pick it up at 160 with the 15k in Reno, 25k in furnishings, that should be a $200,000 investment. Now it's a three bed, four bath, so we're gonna sleep a ton of folks, uh, but it's not like a super huge luxury single family home. So there are going to be properties that we can get higher nightly rents, right? Um, this is something that I think we're going to do more of like the 30 day and 60 day rentals to like healthcare workers and stuff. So our average nightly rent is going to go down. Uh, so all told, I factored out roughly $8,500 in monthly income right, is what our gross could be, but after you factor in our expenses, including a vacancy expense, right? Now, when we're doing, like, uh, longer rentals, like 30 and 60-day rentals, of course, we're going to have lower vacancy during that time, but our daily rent, average daily rent, is going to go down. When people are only renting it for one or two days, it will remain higher. So what I did is put together this chart over the whole shebang. Right over the whole year, this is what I believe the average should be. I believe you will average a total profit of approximately 25 because in the area we're seeing an average over the whole year of 38% vacancy. Right, so we have to factor that in as well. Obviously, our vacancy will be greatly reduced if we get the 30 and 60 day medical rentals, uh, which is what we definitely want to target since we're so close to downtown. Uh, but as far as like vacationers, when we get the higher premiums but shorter stays, they're coming mostly in the summer months. So you know, there's going to be fluctuations with how we bring in the money. So you just got to look at what I believe we'll do, right? So I believe we should profit for you approximately 25 for the month, 30 Gs for the year. And if you break it down with your financing, this is where it gets even juicier, man. You got 
the 30 G's you're bringing in, you're going to need to bring in, of course, your down payment plus the costs, right? So you should have uh, 65,000 into the deal, although actually it looks like I got an error because that 65, that would be 40,000 for your down payment, 25,000 for those furnishings, but I forgot in this chart to include that extra 15 G's, right? So you actually uh, ignore that 65 in the chart. You're going to have $80,000 into the deal, right? So on there, it's showing a cash on cash return of 37 percent but that is actually going to be a little high uh it should be that should be divided by eighty thousand. that's gonna be 30 percent right so we're looking at a cash on cash return of 30 percent and all you need is eighty thousand dollars into this deal folks and like i said it's a newer build right we got a 2005 build so you know what you don't have to deal with you don't have to deal with any of the new Cleveland lead-based paint regulations that are upsetting quite a bit of investors, right? Because those only apply to properties built before 1978 in the city of Cleveland. This one, 2005, absolutely no worry for lead-based paint. So this, solid deal. Let's take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.